Hello, Froggy here, and today I'll be showing you how to get both bonus chests from Val of the Disciple. You want to start off by getting to the point that you killed the first three knowledge bearers. I don't find the first chest all that interesting, so I'm just going to speed through it here. We got a more detailed guide on this one. There are plenty of guides on getting to the first chest. Getting to the second chest solo is something of a new thing, made possible by the recent respawn changes. Here we are at the first chest here. One of the reasons you might want to do this on extra characters is for red border weapons. I've already got all of mine at this point, but it is handy if you aren't actually running it three times to be able to go through and grab some of them. So we need to get past this door here, and I'll be showing you a slightly easier method than the last time I did this. You can just jump up this object on the side here, and then sword fly over to the top of this doorway. It can be a little bit more stable to use a stasis crystal, but you can't just melee through the top like that. And now we just need to get to first encounter. A little bit faster to bring our sparrow, of course. In case you were not aware, if you side boost on a sparrow, you're immune to all fall damage. At least while the boost is happening. Very handy for surviving the drop. As in the other Vow videos I've done, we'll be skipping to first encounter by sword flying around the top of this symbol column here. You want to use a little bit of jump to prevent from falling too much. And you should be able to round the corner before the turn back kills you. You don't have to worry about ammo too much until around now, because you do have access to a flag. Let me go ahead and top off my ammo. Luckily, we still have the first encounter hole. You probably want to use a stasis crystal or something to climb up into it. I've tried to minimize the amount of stasis climbing that we need for this route, but having a stasis grenade here and there is still very useful. I'll be sword flying over to the left to that little staircase. You don't need to land on it, but it can be nice to have a resting spot. I'm just going to continue down the corridor here, and we'll be hitting the caretaker load. The door would be shut, so we can't just go directly. And just going to get back on top here. And here is where the route differs from what I've shown previously. Our current goal is to get up fairly high in the caretaker encounter outside of the map. Although, climbing up uh, regularly would be a lot of stasis climbing. So instead of doing that, we're going to take advantage of one of the different respawn mechanics of this encounter. Whenever you die within a zone where you get pervading darkness, you respawn in a default area 
a little bit outside of the room in question. So we can get rid of a lot of our stasis climbing by just climbing up to the point where we start getting pervading darkness stacks. Looks like we're pretty much there. You don't actually have to die to pervading darkness itself. You just need to die while you're still gaining stacks. Let's go ahead and help it along a bit. Just want to make sure you don't fall out of the zone while you're doing that. And now we're inside. We came inside because it's a lot easier to climb up from in here than from outside. You just head over to this doorway over here to get to the next level. I could switch to high lift to make this jump. But instead, I'm just going to lower my frame rate. If you alt-tab on a PC, you can still use a controller and it'll cap you to 30 frames per second, which naturally makes you jump higher in this game, just because. Now we just need to get back out of map. And luckily for us, we still have the holes over here. Let's just head up on the doorway and jump right out of the map. This conveniently brings us to about the height we need to be, but we do need to walk around to the inside. Just walk this way until the walls no longer stop you. Don't worry about the giant chasm, it's just a mirage. Perfectly safe to walk on it. Just to give you a little bit of context on where we are now, this is the final stand room for the caretaker. It was a dead end for a while for trying to go through the raid without any encounters, but uh, Mad and Corolla managed to find a good candidate for a res breach, and the res breach perfected video from before was actually my attempts to get this res breach to work solo. I wasn't able to, but now that the respawn mechanics are changed, it's actually quite easy. Just gotta line ourselves up with the uh, little notch here, and then you can swing your sword to get in. You want to be careful to get into this gap quickly because you'll most likely get physicsed. Now we just need to crouch jump. You can throw a grenade away and jump in. A stasis melee may help, but you don't necessarily need it. And now we just need to die. And hopefully we will respawn right around there. When you're poking through the ground, you'll want to walk a little bit to free yourself. Don't walk back into the hole though, or you'll fall back down. The point exclusion zone can mess you up, so if you don't stick through the ceiling, you should use stasis to return to a previous spawn point to try again. You'll want to walk away and come back so you're alignment for the point exclusion zone will be a bit different. At this point, you may think you're home free, but unfortunately most of the nice things are not present, so we're going to have to make our own path through the jumping puzzle. It's easier to go outside of the map here because all of the normal jumping platforms are not available. Luckily, there's a hole over here. If you get a little bit of height or use Eat Rises on a Warlock, you can probably get up pretty easily. And now we just need to make our way ever upwards. Luckily, when you're inside the walls, they curve outwards, which makes them pretty convenient to climb up. 
off to the right here, you can see all the little ledges that would normally be sticking out of the side. Since they're not sticking out, we'd have to stasis climb up all of them. They look pretty neat, but they're not why we're here. Perhaps after the chest, I'll go back and take a closer look at them. One of the nice parts about climbing around inside of the walls here is that there are all sorts of little staircase and ledge type things to jump around. There are many ways to get anywhere and you're likely to find more ledges if you want to check out any different areas. This was the most convenient path that I could find to get to the bonus chest. There are definitely faster ways to do it. It should theoretically be doable on any class, although even getting past caretaker is uh, probably going to be a challenge for a hunter. And you might just have to wait for a super or two on a warlock. And let's see if there's something around this ledge. We're pretty much in the home stretch here. I think that uh there's a invisible curvy wall, but I'm just going to use a uh, single stasis nade to get a bit of height here. And we can see the uh, top of one of these platforms. We do need to go back around to the left a little bit. I could just feel a little weird not being able to see your jumping target. And if you reach this area, you're pretty much home free. Up and to the right is uh, where the hole to get back into the uh, bonus chest room is. Right in this doorway thing. And here we go. Second bonus chest without having to do any encounters. Not a red border, but it'll do. Hopefully this helps you out if you don't have a team to run the raid or don't feel like running it three times. Or if you just want to take a look at the cool inside of the pyramid walls. Now let's go take a look at those platforms. Would have been really handy to have these out. Even the thin platforms aren't uh, available, and I don't even think those normally move. It does give you a nice view of the sides of these, since you wouldn't uh, normally be able to get a good view of them. I definitely recommend coming out this way to see the sights. Speaking of sights, if you happen to be at GCX when this video comes out, you may see me. I'll be walking around in my froggy shirt, so if you spot me, feel free to say hi.